Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today, I'm gonna show you the product that I've been having the most fun with this summer. I ordered it a couple weeks ago, and I have pretty much used it every day. It just, it was inexpensive and just, just tons of fun. And if you follow me on Instagram or you read my blog or you follow me on Facebook, you've probably seen this in action or at least little snips of it here and there over the past couple of weeks. Um, it is, drum roll please. This adorable little watercolor set from Meaden. Well, it's um, it says Superior on here. I bought it from the seller Meaden on Amazon because I've purchased from that seller before and had good luck. Um, but anyway, it's a set of 42 watercolors and they are just adorable. They fan out like this. Um, so you can have all these colors open at once. Uh, the, the pans are super thin. If you look at that, they're super thin. I didn't really know what to think. Um, I had seen very similar sets advertised on Instagram, but the these larger sets like this were going for like 50 to 120 dollars it was crazy and then i thought because i don't, don't want to tell you a secret here a lot of the art supplies you see advertised on instagram are actually drop shipped so like a company will find a, a top seller and then they'll go and sell it and then what they do is they order it from they have like an amazon prime account and they order it from amazon and they have it shipped to you so that and then they inflate the price so um i had a and I'm not going to say that that's what all those companies on Instagram are doing. Um, I have no way of knowing that. This is just my, um, this is just my thought and my assumption, but I have no proof. So I just want to put that out there, put that disclaimer out there. I'm not accusing anybody of being a crook, but, um, uh, but I do know that some people have ordered from some of these outfits that advertise on Instagram and they've gotten um, stuff shipped to them from Amazon. So, uh, so I just want to put that out there. If you see something like that, that looks, you know, that looks really good. Check on Amazon first. Um, anyway, uh, so I saw this on, and I found it on Amazon for $19, not $60. So I was really excited and I figured what the heck I'm going to give it a try because I mean, the, the labeling was the same. It said superior 42 with the, the Chinese, I believe it's Chinese, um, characters there. Uh, so I thought I'd give it a try and, um, I opened it up and I, actually the first thing I did was swatch it out, but I lost that swatch, but I made another one and I'll show you in a second. And I was actually sick. I was, it was like a couple days before I was going to leave on vacation and I was on the couch sick and I just started doodling and I just fell right in love with these. I just loved how I could get intense color, how I could get delicate color, uh, delicate color. This was just with a water brush here that came with it, which I thought, you know, I'm not a huge fan of water brushes, but this one is not too bad. Um, I was pretty pleased with it and um, I'm like, okay, that's, that's good. I could definitely have that with me in the car in my bag for any not when i'm intentionally going out to paint uh, on location but if i just want to have something with me in case i have some free time and i want to paint so i did swatch out the colors because because these are very transparent colors the colors look so much darker in the pans than they actually are and also um so i so i made actually because before my swatch was just on paper in like a grid and i found it hard to figure out where the color was on my um on my thing. So I actually saw somebody else's review on Amazon and they had um, made a swatch like this. And I was like, well, that's brilliant. So I made one, put a little brad in it so that I would be able to fan it out while I'm working and be able to see all these other colors because I'm always going for that color, which is like your sap green, that color, which is like your Quinn magenta, ultramarine blue. Um, I always seem to be going after like those colors and this way I can see what they all are. So I don't just keep going after the other one, like the same ones over and over again and wearing them out. But that said, I think even if I wore some out, I mean, there are some that are obviously very similar that would make do in a pinch if I wore one out. And I do intend to try filling these with my watercolors when they're, when they're empty. What I think I would use would be my core watercolors because they also seem to be the hardest to dry. Like they dry down the hardest, but they also re-wet really quickly, uh, really easily. And they, um, uh, and they, you know, they don't seem to be sticky at all when they dry, I think because of the Aquazol binder. So that's what I plan to do when those wear out. I just wanted to show you this color here. This is kind of like the most sap greeny color and I've got a little divot in it, but I still haven't gotten to like the bottom of the pan. I still don't see the plastic yet. I think this like paint palette is like the TARDIS of watercolor. You just don't get to the end. It's like bigger on the inside of the pan or something. It's, it's crazy. Uh, but anyway, I've been using these a lot and I have, I'm just really pleased with it. Now the mixing area is this area right here, but what I usually do is I have it fanned out more and I do mix here, but you might feel like you want a bigger palette, but I find 
find that when I work with a water brush, I'm really not spreading my colors out as much. Uh, so that does kind of keep me restrained into these areas and that's fine. And I also keep a rag handy so I can wipe that off if I need to. Um, you know, so that's something to consider. You don't have a huge mixing area, but, and I've also used like this little area in here where the water brush goes um, to do a little mixing on the fly. Obviously there's enough colors that you don't need to mix. You can just kind of wipe your brush in between colors. That's what you do. You just squeeze a little water, wipe it on a towel and your brush will be clean and ready for the next color. And um, the one thing I'll tell you about the water brush that I don't like is that it peg, the, the cap does peg, but I find that it comes off pretty easily. So um, I recommend sticking the cap in your bag when you're using your brush so you don't lose it because I've lost this thing like five times and um, I mean it will still lock in place uh, but you might end up like banging the bristle against the end and damaging it and I always find that water brush water brushes the tips do tend to wear down a little bit quicker than a traditional brush I think it's probably because if you have a water brush in your bag you're just using that and you just overuse it probably but um so i would just keep your cap in your bag so you don't end up losing it but that locks in nice and secure like i don't worry about it fa uh, falling out now this does come packaged in a uh clear plastic sleeve um just you know just inexpensive clear pla plastic packaging kind of just like uh, just like any clear box um so you can keep that if you're worried about this fanning out i haven't had that problem having it in this bag here but maybe if i was just if this was going to rattle around in like a big bag on its own or in a purse that might be a good idea that way you know nothing's going to fall open and stick you know to something important uh, so just kind of keep that in mind maybe save the box or maybe even just kind of cut it down a little bit so you can just slide it in like a pocket um so that would be my only uh, my only consideration and I definitely would make a swatch like this so that you know just put a little brad in there to hold it together just so that you can see those colors um, until you kind of memorize where they are anyway and that would if you kept that little plastic sleeve that came with it you could just slide that right in the box with it but um, I like to make things as quick and easy as possible so having to take something out of a box bothers me I know it's kind of crazy I take lids off things permanently and everything is pretty much in an open bin in my studio because I like quick access to stuff um, but that would you know but if that bothers you keep the box and just slide it in there okay so I want to show you some of the things that I've painted with this because I know that's what you're going to be interested in um, so the uh, a lot of these things were just done with the water brush and the colors and I apologize for the glare but these are some hand painted postcards they are these uh, Hannah Mule postcards. I had so much fun with these that I actually cut down a bunch more paper and stuck it in this box so I could have that with me um, when I go painting. But I just did some, um, just some crystals from my memory, just so I could practice glazing. I did probably about three or two to three layers and it did fine for glazing that many layers if i was going to do something with a lot more glazing though you know i would go for my more expensive paints because if i'm going to put that much time in it then i would go for my pricier supplies that's just how i am um but you know these were just some pretty easy uh examples of what you can get as far as vibrancy and handling of the colors you can go delicate to bold um I really have no complaints with it and that water brush you know is not bad and like I've mentioned before I'm not the hugest fan of water brushes but um, I think that if you are you know if if you just want a quick and easy mess free way to paint when you only have a few minutes they're a wonderful option so that bag of supplies that I showed you that stays either in my car console or in the bag I'm taking for the day so if I'm like sitting around at a park for a few minutes um, I can you know, do a little painting if I feel like it but if I don't end up painting I haven't carried a ton of stuff around which is uh, good too so I also have been painting a bunch of bookmarks I had a craft fair the other day and I had a feeling it was going to be slow because it was a first craft fair of it was, you know it was a first of its kind and whenever you have a first of its kind show they tend to be slow so I brought my you know handy dandy little bag and some cut up watercolor paper and I just painted painted up bookmarks whenever it was slow I actually sold a few so I don't have all of them here but um but it was just a nice fun way to pass the time and plus people could see your process so if they're considering a larger painting you know sometimes just seeing the artist in action is enough of a of a push to um you know to go and buy something larger or if you you know maybe you wanted to remember to check the artist out online you could buy a, a bookmark and that would rem remind you so those were all done with the water brush um, that came with it now I did use some of my traditional brushes and I used um, and I just did it did some bookmarks yesterday on this uh, handmade paper that's one of them too um, which is really rough that's why I wanted to use my more absorbent brushes and it worked great with my regular brushes too and here you can see like I mixed some ultramarine 
being blue in there and I've got a little bit of granulation happening. So the paints behave like, they behave more like a watercolor than a dye. So some people have asked me, how do these compare with Peerless? Well, they're vibrant like Peerless, but they do seem, because they are like an extruded pan. It's not, um, you know, they are, I don't have any new one. Well, you can kind of see, I think on some of these reds I haven't used very much. Maybe all oh, red doesn't photograph well. Let me see if I can find a color that, that photographs well. Oh, let me try this green. Um, maybe you can see on that green, you can almost see some extruding lines. I don't know if you can, I, I should have, well, I didn't want to review this until I used it a lot so I could tell you whether there are downfalls or whatnot. Um, but you can kind of see the lines where it was extruded, I believe, um, or molded, I would say extruded, um, and then probably glued into the pants so they don't come loose. You know, you it's they're just very slow wearing and very concentrated, it seems. So um, it's kind of another one of those is like, how do they do that for $19? I don't know. But um, but so this is another one done with the regular brushes and the only thing I would warn you with with the regular brushes if you're going to use your regular watercolor brushes which are more absorbent and you're going to be using a bucket of water uh, you know to rinse your brush you're probably going to bring a lot more water over to your watercolors so you want to make sure that you let them dry out so if I'm just using my water brush and I'm sitting you know at the park and my kids are playing, my kids are older now, but say they were playing, they were little kids, um, you know, and I just had, you know, 10 minutes to do a sketch, I could do that, I could close them right up, stick them in my, ba my bag and go if I was using the water brush. If I'm using my regular brushes and a bucket of water at home, say, like I was yesterday on my porch, I left them fanned out and let them dry because I just know I'm bringing a lot more water onto my palette, so um, the paints could swell a little bit. If I closed them right up, they might stick a little bit. Um, even in though, like in July and Maine, it's pretty humid, and sticky like the air you can just feel the air is a little heavy and I haven't had an issue you might have an issue in like a more tropical humid area but um, even one time when it felt a little sticky I was still able to kind of break them apart and I didn't have any like any real problems I'll flip it over you can kind of see I'll tell you what I show you what I mean like you can kind of see it must have been using the yellow ochre because you could see a little bit there but if they're going to the tops are going to rest on the same colors every time so even if you did get a little bit of paint stuck to the top it's just gonna, it's not going to contaminate anything else but that color. So um, when I saw these advertised on Instagram, I have to admit I had the Want Monster. I was like, those look so cool. Then I saw the price, and the Want Monster said, "Adios, amigos, you've got plenty of watercolors." Then I found them on Amazon, and the Want Monster was back, and the Want Monster you know, knows my credit card number. So, uh, so yeah, but I don't regret this at all. Um, in fact, I'm going on a little road trip in a couple days with a friend of mine. We're taking the kids to an amusement park and I know there's going to be times where I'm just going to be kind of sitting and being the central loca localized person kind of watching everybody's stuff. So, um, I'll probably be, you know, doing some quick sketches there and, uh, it'll be nice to have this. So I'll show you what's in my bag, uh, before we go. And um, I got this bag. Did I tell you? Maybe I did. I got this at the Dollar Tree. Um, and I, it's in there in the makeup section. And I got two of these with the feathers on them. And um, I also got one that had owls on them. I thought they were really cute and really handy for like pencils and pens. Cosmetics too, obviously. That's what they're meant for. But they're a nice kind of like... Um, oh, they're a plastic, but they're like a fiber impregnated plastic. They're kind of like... Um, like that like a nylon kind of like what I don't know not what they make backpacks out of but kind of what they make like industrial housing wrap out of it like a Tyvek or something I think uh, but it is a it is like a, a, a woven not a not a it's not like a fibery mesh it's kind of like a woven woven mesh I would say but anyways it's it seems to be fairly waterproof and it's worked really well for me and it hasn't broken I've had it for a few months um, and you know it's it seems to seems to be good good for the task there um, so I put my block of paper this is six inches by eight inches and I uh, came in a smart art box just a great size I'm gonna put my pre-cut bookmarks and I cut some of these out of my um, six by nine uh, whatchamacallit, it's the Aqua Bee watercolor paper that I always recommend from Amazon uh, because you can get 50 sheets for $15 and it's 100% cotton and it's just great for a practice paper. It's a, you know, you can do finished works on it too, it's archival, but um, it's so affordable. And then I cut some out of some 5x7 watercolor paper. This is the Shazan uh, handmade Indian watercolor paper and it's 5x7, so I cut these 25 by 7 so there's no waste. The other ones I cut like 2 and a quarter by 6 so I got 4 bookmarks out of each sheet of that paper and I got two out of each sheet of this paper. Um, just wonderful to have for those quick sketches. That goes in here too. We probably stack those up actually. But I like that nothing gets bent 
and this bag is just the perfect length and I think when you are packing up supplies like this if you have little if you have you need to have ample room so things don't get broken and you don't rip your bag but you want it fairly um fairly tight so you don't end up um, you don't have stuff wiggling around like I mentioned I don't know if I mentioned it or not but if you were um, this comes shipped in like a plastic sleeve a little plastic box like you know you're just regular plastic packaging um, material like acetate like a heavy acetate so if you were gonna throw this in your bag and it was gonna be floating around loosey-goosey in there I would slide it in that box um, so it nothing can fan out and you could probably even put your little swatch in there too with the box I, I'm pretty sure that would fit I threw mine away because I don't like to take things out of boxes I like stuff ready to go easily accessible um, so if you were gonna have something loosey-goosey I would definitely keep that little uh, box that it comes in just as a like a sleeve or a pocket I might cut out the top the top flap just so I can just slide it in and slide it out easily um, you know so that would be a good idea but with this because there isn't a ton of room for it to move around I can just plop that in with the the water brush side down and um, and there you're good to go uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned I think I did mention about the the cap on the water brush not pegging right on the end so if you're using it you stick your cap on the end you know it will stay but it can be knocked off pretty easily so I would throw your cap right in your bag uh, when you go to use it so you don't lose it um, rather than pegging it because I've lost this cap like five times since I got this set uh, so that would be my recommendation because it can still feed water even when you're not using it that way you don't have a wet bag it'll all be kind of contained in there but um, this is just a great little rig I highly recommend it 19 bucks on Amazon you can't go wrong um, I would just you know I just I also want to do this because I know a lot of people are seeing the ads for these and I don't want somebody to pay a hundred bucks for this thing when you can get it for $19 on Amazon that's not fair um, I would be disappointed if I paid a hundred dollars for it I mean it's a great little rig you know but it's you know under 20 bucks great little rig not like hundred dollar great little rig so there you have it a review much requested review on that that nifty little palette everyone's been asking me about it since I got it and um, it is so much fun and uh, really good quality surprisingly good quality for the price I don't know how they do it but um, but I'm happy they do because it is fun and I would definitely grab a few of those for like stocking stuffers or uh, birthday presents you, you know I would give that to my friends who stamp it wouldn't have to be like a kid's birthday present I'd give it to somebody who's interested in getting started in like some loose watercolor florals or something like that where you know you just want to play and you don't want to worry about your supplies being so precious that you can't use them um, so you're not really sacrificing much by using that it's not like you're getting a Crayola quality product um, nothing wrong Crayola. Crayola makes wonderful children's stuff I don't want to say that like Crayola is bad I mean but like you know like um, a kid's watercolor it's not like you're you're painting with a kid's watercolor you're painting with something that's very vibrant and robust um, of course I don't know how, how light fast it is I you know just got this a few weeks ago um, but bookmarks will be in books and you know postcards will be mailed so I'm not really that worried about that uh, so I think that's about it if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments below I'll try to answer them and I'm sure other folks have the palette would chime in as well uh, please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this review don't forget to subscribe and tell your friends about this fun YouTube channel we have over here thank you so much for watching until next time Happy crafting!